Welcome back, it's me Lou, and I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review, and today we're going to have a trios as we take a look at three wonderful figures from McFarlane Toys, and they're from the Warhammer 40,000 line. Okay, uh, let's get this started. So, uh, the first figure we're going to look at is the um, Ultramarines Primaris Intercept Assault Intercessor. Um, let me set this... Let's make some room first. So the Primaris Assault Intercessor was one of the first figures in the line to come out. That alongside with the, um, the Necron Warrior. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with Warhammer 40k, Warhammer 40k is a wonderful tabletop wargaming uh, um, game that's played with miniatures and it's awesome it's been around forever and for me it was really surprising when McFarlane announced that they were doing action figures I know that I think it's Bandai Bandai has a line of their own um or hammer 40k figs but those are those are significantly uh, a, a lot more they're very expensive I think those retail anywhere between I think maybe like 80 to 100 dollars per figure I think and that's like I, I believe this that's the retail price right out right out of the gate Whereas these are McFarlane toys, and I think I paid maybe like 20 bucks for this at Target. So yeah, um, we have saw some uh, Warhammer 40k action figures. It's really awesome. I was kind of surprised that the first figure they gave us was actually... Um, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't surprised that it was an Ultramarine and that it was uh, an Assault Intercessor. But the one thing that I was surprised about is that it was... Um, a higher ranking official and that it was a sergeant and you, you could tell that by the red helm um because in all honesty part of me is that if they released uh an ultramarine in you know this standard infantry and it was just completely all blue for me i think it'd be just like a one and done purchase because all i really wanted was just a plain standard ultramarine but they gave us a, a higher ranking officer and i think Maybe that's partially because they didn't want people to just to go, you know, be one and done, but they want us to wait, which I don't mind. I don't mind getting the red helm. I don't mind getting the, you know, the badge and all that, but there's a part of me. I just want the, the plain grunt. That's all I really want. But this is a cool figure nonetheless. Uh, let's take a look at the package. So this is a hefty action figure. Um, it's the same. The box is about the same size as your normal McFarlane toys action figure. I believe the dimensions are similar to that of the um, DC Multiverse line that McFarlane's putting out, which is kind of cool because you have that and you have their um, other lines like The Witcher and stuff, and Spawn and the McFarlane and the McFarlane Mortal Kombat figures. It's kind of cool how they kind of almost have a uniform package design. Um, I, I, I really enjoy that, especially if you're a mint on card collector. It makes displaying it, you know, not a, not only a little bit easier if you're a mint on card guy, but there's a homogenized uniform look about everything which I really appreciate um, the package designs cool the one thing I do hate about the McFarlane toy stuff especially with a figure this heavy is that I can't stand um, the the hook here that they have on the cardboard it's not re there's no plastic here to reinforce it and I've seen figures like some of the McFarlane stuff if it's hanging on the pegs long enough this starts to tear and if you're a mint on card guy that likes to display your figs and hang them up, um, you know, this kind of becomes a, an issue, especially if a figure that's as heavy as uh, this Ultramarine. Uh, but looking at it, it's great. Um, I really love how uh, the figure is kind of framed in the package. And you kind of have like a gold in the background. It's kind of reminiscent of maybe like... Um, the side it'll paint what color is that uh, retributor armor and that's kind of like a gold sheen and it's kind of cool that you know you have that kind of contrast with the mccrag blue of the ultramarine kind of like popping up against it so um you have his chain sword his bolter his jet pack um nice character portrait on the side you have the red helm indicating he's a sergeant ultramarines primaris assault intercessor and some cool artwork on the other side and on the back. It shows the fit the first two figures in the wave. So we have the Intercessor and we have the Necron Warrior. And what also came out alongside these figures, there was the artist proof of the um, 
Salt Intercessor, and the artist proof was really cool. It was essentially an all gray action figure, so it's kind of like it's kind of a uh, call a call out to the actual like um, gaming miniatures. Like if you've dabbled in 40k, sometimes some of the mini some some of the models and the miniatures come pre molded in a in a gray plastic, and that's or not necessarily gray plastic, but um, sometimes they're a blue plastic or even a gray one. But I believe most of the time they're um, no, I take it back. I'm really confusing things right so <laughs> the models are generally gray plastic or you know in some cases if it's a blue plastic you prime it in gray but either way it was kind of cool to artist proof because it was almost like they were giving you a bare figure so you got to paint it up any way you wanted to it which is kind of cool it was almost like getting a miniature uh, space marine but then in giant figure form and allowing you to actually paint it up as you would a normal model so the artist proofs are really cool. They're all gray and they're kind of hard to come by. And especially now with uh, so many um, customizers wanting them just for the sake of being able to create different chapters of Space Marines, you know, like, you know, whether it's the Imperial Fist or the Salamanders. Um, it's, a, it's just a great opportunity for customizers to, like, really flex the creative muscle and create their own Space Marines of their choosing in the chapter of their choice. So I actually have this figure already opened up, and then this is the one I display mint on card. So I'm going to set this guy aside, and we're going to take a look at the loose one I have. So this is the, the loose Space Marine that I got, and it's actually uh, a slight, slight custom. Um, so the one thing is, is that as much as I love the, the figure, as I stated previously, I just want the plain um, Ultramarine that's not a higher ranking official. I just want the completely blue uh, Space Marine and without the badge and without the red helm. I just want a blue helm. But, so I took the helmet off. At first I was thinking about just painting this up and then removing the badge. So I could just, and then, you know, just correcting some of the, you know, changing out some of the markings on the shoulder pauldrons to like what I wanted. But then part of me was kind of like, you know what, let's just go with this. But let's do something different. And I noticed that in my bin of Marvel Legends heads that I had a larger uh, action figure head and it, it looked really cool it looked really gritty and it's the proportions were larger and more cartoony than the normal standard Marvel Legends figure and when I put it on this figure I'm like you know what the proportions on this kind of fit that weird um, games workshop scale like they use for their models and it kind of fits on this Space Marine it looks cool it looks like a natural fit the proportions are just right and I'm like you know what I'm gonna go with that I'm gonna take the helmet off pretend it's like he took his helmet off and what we have here is a, a lieutenant with his helmet off and it looks awesome so if you're wondering how I got this to work um, the socket in this heads a lot larger than the peg so what I did was I took a, a strip of rubber that I cut out from an old bicycle tube and then I wrapped it around the um, the peg and then it made the peg a little bit thicker a little bit fatter and I was able to plug the head on with it's just a nice snug fit and you can still rotate the head and it doesn't fall out it's you know it requires some effort to take it off but it's cool and since, since i didn't mod the peg if i wanted to i could easily slap this back on here so yeah this this is wonderful i think it's awesome um now in terms of the action figure this really looks like what it's supposed to look like uh, if you've dabbled in 40k and you, you have yourself a full army, or even if you just have a handful of of Space Marine models, um, everything about this is there. All the all the details, they're all accounted for. Um, the only thing that's omitted is maybe some color applications. Uh, depending on you know what you do as a painter yourself in terms of your own um, personal Space Marine army, or what you might have seen in some of the official artwork that Warhammer puts out. Uh, the color applications might be kind of limited because, you know, there's certain areas here where, uh, you know, the application of more color was would, would probably be warranted. For example, um, I'd probably add some silver on this, like on the little bolt here on his jetpack. I'd probably add some silver um, in certain areas, like maybe near the vents. But, you know, it's understandable. Uh, in order to keep this figure at a certain price range, you're not going to go all out on the paint application. But at the same time, if you're a, a Warhammer enthusiast, you know, you'll probably take it upon yourself to either like add more paint yourself 
or just, you know, completely repaint this and make this a completely different chapter of Space Marine. Um, but either way, this is a beautiful figure. Uh, the articulation's there. And for as bulky as the armor is, everything about it works. There's some ingenious stuff going on here for the shoulders. So it could, you know, you have the, it could rise up, it could rise down, it could rotate. Nice big socket for the ball joint. And it's, it's like, and uh, yeah, it's just awesome. Everything about this is awesome. The shoulder pauldrons articulated, so it could kind of like move and adjust depending on how you pose the figure. Um, uh, there's some movement below the chest. No, there's no waist swivel, but you do have a, the swivel up towards the chest. And it allows you also for ab crunch. Uh, the legs are kind of hindered, but that's to be expected. Um, you know, Space Marines aren't necessarily agile. They're in these giant, hefty power suits. So everything about it's cool. A lot of it's, you know, it's awesome. It's great that they paid such close attention to the details. Uh, the fan base, you know, they're they're very passionate about about Warhammer, and you know, if if, if McFarland took any liberties or if, you know if anything was wrong, the fan base would be very vocal about it. So everything here is cool. Yeah, if this is this really feels like they just took a a Primaris Intercessor model and just blew it up and gave it articulation. And, you know, I love this thing. And I, it's like I said, I, I kind of wish they just give us the plain infantry. Um, you know, I don't want, I mean, it's, it's nice that they gave us a lieutenant, but I would just love to just buy a whole bunch of this, the standard grunts. Awesome. 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 So since we have, um, our ultramarine out, let's take a look at our blood angel. So here's a blood angel and, uh, um, uh, comes with a hell blaster. And if you'll notice, you know what, it's not just a straight up repaint. Um, this is an actual blood angel. If you look, if you look at it as a killer, um, or his chest emblem, you know, it's different than the space Marine here. Here he has the skull. Whereas on the blood angel, he actually has the bloodstone on his chest and he has another bloodstone hanging from his hip. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, beautiful artwork on the side. Blood angels, hell blaster. And uh, so the what we have here, it's like, yeah, here's the other other figures on the line. So we have our Blood Angels Hell Blaster, and he comes with his Assault Plasma Incinerator. We have the Adepta Soridus um, Battle Sister, and that's we have the Artist Proof. We have the Adepta Soridus uh, Battle Sister with the Bolter, and she also has her Chain Sword. And then we have the artist proof of the Hell Blaster. Um, the artist proofs are always harder to come by, so if you ever see one, grab them. Um, customizers want them just because you know they're they're just plain bare figures, and it gives them a great canvas to work on in terms of painting them up. Um, so yeah, here we have our Hell Blaster with his plasma incinerator, and it looks awesome. Uh, let's take this guy out. Uh, generally, I like to keep. Some, there's some stuff I like to have mint on card, but when I found this guy when he first came out, someone I don't know, someone went nuts and went aggro and ripped the package. All right. So first impressions in the tray. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful figure. Um, and I kind of wish I had another one. Um, one thing I, <laughs> I'm kind of toying around with in my head is like, already I'm, I'm really wanting to put um, the red helm from the um, Assault Intercessor onto this guy, onto the Blood Angel. Uh, I, I'm not even sure if it's the same shade of red, actually, to be honest. This red looks a little bit brighter. But yeah, there's a part of me, I just want an all red you know blood angel like just as much as i wanted to sing all blue you know ultramarine but i think you know they're, i think they're gonna say that for down the road you know for troop building and stuff but this is all i really want i just want you know but no no well let's get this guy out a lot of ties are holding this guy in so we have his plasma incinerator
We have his um, jump pack. Yeah, they're really going to make me work for this one. Um, Alright, just give me a moment here as I try to fish this guy out. It took some. <laughs> it took a little bit of effort, but we have our Blood Angel out of his package, and um, we also have his um, his little action figure stand. A uh, real quick note on the stands. I think that I think the figure stands are cool, but. They're kind of small, and not that it needs to be the size of the action figure, but in all honesty, um, I think if McFarlane wanted to go the crazy route, they should have given us a figure stand that um, kind of resembled like maybe the actual like um, miniature bases that you get with the models. So you get a stand that'd probably be you know like this much, like maybe like this much around. And I'm really hoping there's, I'm really hoping that there's customizers out there, like maybe a. a you know 3d printer artist or something that's made custom bases that are kind of like um resemble the actual model miniature stands because it'd be i think it'd be so cool to actually get like a full base and really base it up like you would a miniature and add like i don't know grass or like texture oh, so yeah let's put this guy together we have his jump pack it's gonna go on his back and then we have his <clears throat> his plasma incinerator Now the, the God, this is now this is a much more heavier weapon than the than the chain gun or the um sidearm here. So I'm not sure how well this it's gonna hold up. It seems alright. The, the joints at least the joints on the elbow kind of I don't know. I foresee if you display if you have this on display, part of me kinda of feels like over time this <laughs> this might get too heavy, and this 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 it's gonna start drooping. Um, but otherwise, it's great. Yeah. So if you have, I mean, if you have one of these figures, you kind of know what they feel like. Um, there's there are differences on his pauldron. Uh, he has the bloodstone again with the wings. Uh, the bloodstone on the side of his hip. Of course, you know, his weapon's different. This guy has the plasma incinerator. But uh, essentially, a lot of it's you know a lot of, a lot the same. And I don't know, it's, these are great action figures. But yeah, there's a part of me that I just really want to swap the helmets out just to see what it'd look like. But I don't know, maybe I'll just wait until they actually give us like you know the standard troops. Okay, since we're on the subject of Warhammer forty thousand, um, uh, let's talk about these guys a little bit in more detail. So first off, this is from my pile of shame. Um, <laughs> I have a bunch of Space Marines that I still need to paint up. Uh, this is my Space Marine Command Squad. And if you're not familiar with Space Marines and Warhammer and Ultramarines and all the crazy lore that goes with it, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for some really gnarly action figures in the future. Um, and this is just kind of like a small sampling of it. You know, as you can see here, you know, taking one of these action figures and making more characters is very is very reasonable, especially since a lot of them kind of share similar things, lots similar bodies, similar armor types. But you know, there's little embellishments that makes each one a little bit more unique than the other. And in terms of accessories, the the amount of accessories, you know, if they turn this into an, like 
full-on action figure line. Like, the amount of accessories is endless. And, you know, it's just really cool. And over here, it's like, for example, here we have the plasma incinerator on this guy. You know, this guy has the chain sword. Um, yeah, it's cool. So much, so much potential for this line of action figures. I really hope that McFarlane, you know, just takes the ball and runs with it when it comes to the Warhammer stuff. Um, my biggest fear was that it was going to be one of those weird lines that where McFarlane obtains a license and then they just stick around for one or two waves. Like, I loved it when they got the Harry Potter license and then they gave us that first wave. And it seems like the only wave of action figures. You know, they just gave us the, the core three characters and, like, um, I think Voldemort. And, but, you know, there was, you know, we got Ron, we got Hermione, and we got Harry, but they're just in, you know, their casual civilian garb. You know, they didn't give us them in their student outfits. You know, we never got any of the other students. Likewise, the great, their Game of Thrones line, as impressive as the action figures were, it was disappointing because they only gave us, like, the one wave. And I'm staring at them right now, and with the exception of, like, the one or two Walgreens exclusives, it was very disappointing because there was so much room to create an entire world of characters. But, you know, I'm not sure if they have the license anymore or if they're doing anything with it, but that was disappointing. And I, I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that, you know, with them doing Warhammer stuff, I'm really hoping that their partnership with Games Workshop is a long one and that we'll get so many more um, f characters and figures in the future. Like, I'd love to see some of the hero characters taken from the fiction, the lore, and from the game. And let's talk a little bit about um, the game and the fiction. Um, uh, so what I have here is I have, I have, <laughs> I can't have a couple of my Warhammer books here. Um, I got these at half price books, you know, saved me some money. I can't remember which edition this is. I don't know if this is, um, is this eighth edition. I can't remember what edition this, uh, uh, this book is, but, uh, and we have our, this is our space Marine codex. So this book here, just, it just strictly covers just the Space Marines. And I marked off a couple of things. Uh, for example, here we have the Ultramarines. So these are generally the, the Space Marines everyone thinks of. You know, they're always in the crag blue. And here's that little thing with the helmets we were talking about earlier. So the red helm indicates a sergeant. And it's also, if, if, if I remember correctly, in terms of the lore, it's a mark of honor. Um... I think it has to do with something about, like, uh, Robut uh, Gilliman. He, like, I think he, like, forbade some sergeant from doing something, but then he, the sergeant went off off um, orders and did it anyways, and what he did was actually the, the correct thing. So ever since then, I think they kind of, like, is a symbol of honor and re remembrance of that guy who disobeyed orders but actually did the right thing. They've kind of, like, uh you know, created the the Red Helm as a badge of honor, I think. Um, I don't know my lore too well, but that's what I kind of remember. So if you look here, yeah, there's all sorts of opportunity here to do, do some really fun stuff. Um, and, yeah, I mean, there's vehicles, all sorts of crazy armor. It's, like, endless. So I'm really hoping that McFarlane goes, you know, balls to the walls with this toy line. You know, you get to, you have all the different chapters. So, I mean, in terms of color schemes, you know, like the white scars, the imperial fists, I think would be awesome. I've seen some customs like on Instagram of some of the, you know, some fan, some fan renditions of the imperial fists using McFarlane figures, and it's crazy the amount of lengths that some of these fans will go. They'll three D print custom shoulder pauldrons. They'll 3D print custom weapons, new helms. It's so insane. I love the Salamanders. They're awesome. Raven Guard. I'd love to see Death Watch. That's what I kind of want to see. Uh, Death Watch and Space Wolves. And then here's some of the, the models. Really cool stuff. 
Yeah, so this is, oh man, it, it, you know, for me to look at this, imagine what McFarlane could do with this toy line, it's like, fingers crossed. You know, I'm really hoping they stick with this toy line for the long haul. But you never know. I mean, you know, maybe a year from now the line is dead. I don't know what, I don't know what their plans are. But for me, it's like, just keep on going with it because there's so much they could do. And I think that's, did I have more? Um, I marked some notes down. All right, that's the. All right. Oh, I forgot. Um, uh, I can't remember if we're gonna cover it or not. Um, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. yeah, let's do it anyways. All right, since I have, since we're on the subject of Warhammer, I have one last action figure to look at, and we're looking at this. We're looking at the Adepta, so Riotus Battle Sister. And this is just like the um, the other Marines. There's also a great artist proof of this figure. Um, she comes with her bolter, her chain sword. Um, yeah, so not much to say in terms of the package. It's very similar to the other ones. Um, you know, figure is perfectly framed in the window. Um, you see her bolter, her chain sword. She comes with a base. Character artwork on the side, and let's take her out. Now, this was a pleasant surprise when they gave us this, because for me, it's I, I thought they were just going to give us, you know, Space Marine after Space Marine after Space Marine, but it's cool that they're branching out and kind of giving us some of the other characters. Um, you know, hopefully we'll see some of the other like alien races and dudes that aren't necessarily donning you know space marine armor all right so first impressions of this figure while still in the, on the plastic tray uh it's beautiful it's perfect um all the details are accounted for um, All the T's are crossed. All the I's are dotted. Um, I can't really see anything that this thing's missing. Get her chain sword out. Okay, so we have a somewhat smaller figure as opposed to the um, Space Marines we we're looking at earlier, but just because she's a little bit smaller makes her nonetheless impressive. Very, very beautifully sculpted figure. Um, whereas the Space Marines are covered in these really bulky armors. Uh, this is a much smaller, slender figure, but the amount of detail, it seems like they really make the most of the canvas. Um, you have all these spikes and rivets and zippers and emblems and chains and everything sculpted on her. The helm is awesome. All the sculpting and cuts are nice and deep. Uh, the jetpacks slightly smaller. All the details are accounted for. Um, in terms of articulation, <clears throat> her head rotates. Now her shoulder pauldrons kind of get in the way, so you know even though the the articulation is there, the, the range of motion is kind of limited. Um, I think. She has a bicep swivel, but it's kind of it feels kind of gummy, so I'm uh, I'm a little bit hesitant about getting nuts with it. I don't want to actually tear the. It's a softer, rubbery plastic, and if if this is, I don't want to force this if it's kind of stuck. Um, 
Yeah, double jointed elbows. Double jointed, or is it single jointed knees? Oh, double jointed knees. This is cleverly hidden. Wow, that's awesome. The boot is actually, it's actually a separate sleeve of plastic over the shin. It's the tight fit, but wow, that's ingenious. That's awesome. Look at that. Uh, the skirt, it's it's made of a, a very softer plastic. It's very thin. Nice micro texture on it, and it allows you to be able to kick up without this. I mean, this will get in the way, but at least it's it's flexible and pliable. Yeah, this is great. Awesome figure. I'm liking this a lot. And let's give her her chain sword and her bolter. I'm not sure if these go on specific fingers. Oh, it looks or hands. It looks okay. So the left hand I think holds the bolter because it does have a trigger finger. Um, it's sep. If you look at it, it's kind of separate from the rest of the fingers. And yeah. So since we're on the subject of this, let's talk a little bit about her. Um, so what we have here, let me get this out. Um, oh, so this is uh, real quick. This is what I was talking about earlier. Um, hopefully they'll give us other hero characters, or I mean actually give us hero characters period um so these aren't just like your standard fare these are actually like specific characters and it'd be awesome if we got some of these guys down the road all right so for this one we are looking at Right, so she's an Imperial agent. She falls under Adepta Soritis. So the promulgators of the Imperial Creed, the Adeptus Ministorum, more commonly known as the Calsa Ar <laughs> the Clesiarchy, the Clesiarchy hosts numerous subfactions, the best known of which are the military wing, the Adeptus Soritis, along with the Orthodox training orphanages of the Scala. Progenium and its missionaries, the Missionaris Galaxia. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. When it comes to, like, uh, Warhammer fiction, it's deep. Um, it's really deep. And it's just kind of cool to actually get, like, a, a battle sister. Um, some great artwork there. And over here we have... A uh, nice shot of the Battle Sisters over here. And you can see um, we have some great representation of the... Here's the actual real miniature model. But if you look around, there's there's so much opportunity for creating more characters, m you know, more action figures. It's awesome. Like, I dig this, this chick up here. She has a crazy top hat, crossbow. And then you have uh, Celestine, the living saint. All right, this video is running a little bit long, so let's begin to wrap this up. Um, let me grab the other hefty boys. All right, let's get you in the middle. Let's get you on the side. So what are my final thoughts on these action figures? Um, they're awesome. If you're a fan of Warhammer 40k, uh, these action figures are a godsend. If you're new to the world of 40k, um, this is essentially your gateway drug. Um, 
you know, this is a great introduction to people that aren't familiar with 40K. And I think once you start dipping your toes into it, uh, it's hard to pull your feet out of the pool. Um, a lot of great stuff going on here. Uh, the fiction's really super deep. Um, the on the on the on the actual like tabletop gaming end, the models are beautiful. And if you're into customizing action figures, uh, do yourself a favor and buy a couple of uh, War Warhammer models and paint them up and put them together and. I think you'll just fall in love with the hobby. I mean, like I have. Uh, it's something I, I discovered over the last uh, year and a half. Um, you know, prior to like the pandemic and COVID, I started dabbling in Warhammer a little bit. Um, I started collecting some of the models. I started painting them up, and I, I just really fell in love with it. It's a fun hobby, and it was is weird. The timing just kind of all fell into place. And not too long after when I got into Warhammer, you know, McFarland figures came out, and I didn't even know about that. So that was a surprise, and out of the blue, Marvel Comics, they released a miniseries um, based on the hero character um, Marnius Calgar, which was, I, I enjoyed that a lot. So, um, yeah, these figures are beautiful, they're great display pieces, and if you're into the modeling end of it, they're great to customize. Um, can't say enough, I can't give this, this line enough praise, you know, it's just fingers crossed that McFarlane you know, really sticks with it and really gives us more more figures in the future. So wrapping this up, once again, my name is Lou. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my video. I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you're a Warhammer fan, you know, just leave a comment below. If there's anything you'd like to add to this that I might have overlooked, uh, I'd love to hear about it. So in the meantime, um, come back again and we'll hang out and talk action figures. All right, take care.